Yeah. Hi everyone, welcome to the latest Hedera JavaScript tutorial. In this one, we're going to show you how you can send your first cryptocurrency transfer transaction using the native Hedera cryptocurrency, HBAR. Let's get started. So you can see here that I'm opened in Visual Studio Code. If we check my package JSON, you can see that we have the Hashgraph SDK installed as a dependency. Specifically, we have version 1.1.8. You may want to check and have this version installed if you're following this tutorial. What we're going to do next, though, is go back to our index.js file and require all of the JavaScript packages that we're going to use in this example. The first one is going to be the .env package. After .env is configured to the default parameters, that is whatever is inside this .env file, we can install or import all of the modules we'd like to use from the Hedera JavaScript SDK. In this case, we only need two modules, specifically the client, which will allow us to define our account and keys that will submit transactions, and the cryptocurrency transfer transaction, which is what allows you to send HBAR to and from the network. After we've imported our modules, the next thing that we're going to do is write an asynchronous function, and inside that function, we will configure our client. But within this asynchronous function, I'm going to define my client connection, which will use my account ID and private key that is contained in that .env file. With our client module in the Hedera Hashgraph JavaScript SDK, you can see that we can easily con configure it for testnet, or we can configure it for mainnet, which will use the default address book in the network. So this is the list of nodes that you can submit transactions to. And the default configuration will submit to one of those nodes at random. Now that we have a client configured to the test network, I'm going to set my account ID and my private key as the operator of this client. That means when I go to submit transactions, my private key will sign them and the HBAR required to pay for their fees will come out of my account. And so you can see that I've defined them from my process.env and then the specific key value format that I have in my .env file here. In this case, it's account underscore ID in all caps and private underscore key also in all caps. And so these two lines of code is everything that we need to define my client connection to the public Hedera test network. After we have a valid client established, we can build our crypto transfer transaction and use that client to send it to the network. And with the crypto transfer transaction, there are a few mandatory fields or API parameters that you need to include. Uh, the first of which is the sender. And this is going to be sent from my account ID. And then the next field in the sender is going to be how many H bars or tiny bars you would like to send in this transfer. In this case, I'm going to send 100 tiny bars, which is one one millionth of an H bar. Well, each tiny bar is one one millionth of an H bar. The other required parameter on this API is going to be the recipient. And so that's which account is going to receive these HBARs after we have sent them to the network. And 
In this case, I'm going to send them to maybe account three. And account three should receive all 100 of these tiny bars. The final required field or uh, object that we have to customize here is going to be setting execute. The execute function is actually going to be what builds and signs that transaction, as well as sends it to the network. And so I'm going to pass in my client here because I want my client to be the one paying for this transaction. And you can see that we have the await keyword here because this is an asynchronous function. So this will actually go out to Hedera and generate a transaction ID for us and then come back to us after this has been submitted to the network. With that transaction ID though, we can grab the receipt of this transaction to confirm whether or not it was successful after it's reached consensus. And again, I'm saying that my client, so whichever node that this client is configured to, if you don't pass any configurations here, you know, it'll choose a node at random, but it will go out to that random node and get the receipt. That receipt will confirm whether or not we were able to successfully send this HBAR. And so the final step here is I'm going to log this receipt so I know whether or not this was successful. After I've logged our receipt, the last thing I need to do down here is actually call this asynchronous function, which will execute this script for us. So you can see the first thing that we're doing is defining our client connection here. After that, we're building our cryptocurrency transfer transaction. And then we're going to be getting And the last step there, we'll be getting the receipt of the transaction post Hedera consensus. So that's after every node in the Hedera network has became aware of it, determined if it was valid, and applied it to its state. So if we open up a terminal here at the top of our screen, we should be able to run node index.js and see whether or not this was a successful cryptocurrency transfer. That's awesome, and you can see that the status of this receipt was successful, and that, that, that means that this was a successful cryptocurrency transfer. Every computer on the public Hedera test network has updated its state and sent 100 tiny bars from my account ID to account three. Hopefully this was a helpful tutorial. In the next few, we'll show you how you can send HBAR to multiple parties even, or get started with the Hedera consensus service. Thank you so much for following the tutorial, and please let us know if you have any issues in the comments below. Yeah.